Hey folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I'm here to talk to you about something that I don't think I've ever seen anybody talk about, but could be game-changing or at least very interesting, and that is the concept of hiding in Dungeons & Dragons, and not just hiding or hiding behind another creature, hiding inside another creature. Yes, you heard me right, hiding inside a creature. I know of at least two subclasses that can allow you to do this. There may be other ways to do it as well, but I thought we'd talk about them and then what kind of implications and very funny scenarios this could lead to. Before I dive into that though, uh, again, my name is Ted, this is Nerd Immersion, so hopefully if you like what I do here, you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it really does help this. I hope you enjoy all the variety of different content that I've been releasing while I'm off recharging and on vacation. Uh, so that being said, my birthday is 10 days away, and while I had originally wanted to break 100,000 by then, I'm gonna say let's shoot for Gen Con, which is the middle of September. If we can get to 100,000 subscribers by then, we should have a big party at Gen Con, and if you can't make it, let's do a follow-up at PAX Unplugged later this year. I'll be at both, we should hang out, and let's have something cool to celebrate. That's enough of that, let's move on to the video. So the we're gonna be talking about the Phantom Rogue specifically here, and the Ghost Walk ability. So I'll read it, then I'll read the Warlock ability, and we'll talk about it. So you, uh, as a bonus action, you assume a spectral form. Well, in this form, you have a flying speed of 10 feet. You can hover. Attack rolls have disadvantage against you. You can move through creatures and objects as if it were difficult terrain, but you take a D10 force damage if you end your turn inside a creature or an object. You stay in this form for 10 minutes or until you end it as a bonus action. To use this feature again, you finish a long rest or destroy a soul trinket as part of the bonus action you use to activate it. And then for the Undead Warlock, this is the new one that came to us in Van Richten's guide. Um, as an action, project your spirit uh, from your body. You leave your body behind, it's unconscious, and you're in this new spirit projection. Um, it has the same stats as you, it just doesn't have your possessions. Any damage that affects your body or your spirit body affects the other. Your spirit can remain outside your body for up to an hour, concentration as though like a spell. And when it ends, you can either have your spirit return to its body, or your body teleport to the location of the spirit. And then you get the following benefits while in spirit form. Resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage. You can cast a spell of the Conjuration or Necromancy school. Uh, the spell doesn't require verbal or somatic components or materials that lack a gold cost. That'll be important. You have a flying speed equal to your walking speed and can hover. You can move through objects and creatures as if it was terrain, but you take a d10 force damage if you end your turn inside a creature or object. While you are using your form of dread, uh, once during each of your turns, you can deal necrotic damage. When you deal necrotic damage to a creature, you regain half hit points. That's once per long rest. So the thing here, now it will cost you to take damage to do what I'm going to suggest. However, it's not unlivable, right? You're level 13, a D10 force damage, a turn, isn't bad. And what I mean by this is with the ghost walk ability as a phantom rogue, that is you. You are in the ethereal form as a bonus action. You don't have to concentrate. There's really no chance of you getting knocked out of it other than then you choosing to end it or someone damaging you enough to knock you out of it, basically taking you to zero hit points. But it says you have a fly speed, you can hover, and attack rolls against you have disadvantage, and you can all move through creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. So in theory, bad guy is here, right? Somewhere over here-ish. And I use my ghost walk ability, and then I can just sort of phase into the, the bad guy. And I can choose, if I end my turn, Inside the bad guy, I take a d10 force damage, but that's it. So in theory, and this is what I thought would be an interesting, we'll talk about it in a second, but I could, depending if the guy's bigger than me, if it's like a large-sized creature and I'm a medium creature, I can go inside the enemy and just basically hide inside them. I will have total cover because they can't see me because I'm inside them. I should have total cover from attacks, as in you can't hit me because the only way to damage me is to attack this guy and you have to basically get through them to get to me and i don't know how we, how you guys feel about this but it doesn't say like there's nothing that makes me think that you feel anything when i ghost walk inside you i know that sounds a little weird but like if there's a giant and i slip inside that creature using my ghost walk ability there's nothing that states that they feel me doing that so I could, and I have a fly speed, so I could fly up if it's a giant or something into like their torso region. So I'm like not like in a leg where like if you're in a leg, let's say, you know, and they go to walk, you have to 
time your move, basically use your reaction to move with them to time it so that you don't get like their leg doesn't go and you're left behind as they're walking. But if you were to do that in the torso, you at least have a little leeway there. Um, but what I thought was interesting is uh, the concept that I would try to pose to all of you would be if I brought this up as a as a player or something, I think it would be cool to have the DM let me make like a performance check or something. You've seen it all before in cartoons and shows where someone like sees somebody else in a mirror and they think it's them, but it's not them. And they're trying to do all the same movements to like not have them like, oh, look, I'm doing the same movements, but it's not really me. I'm pretending. And I thought it would be really funny to have the DM allow you to make like a performance check if you're a medium creature in a roughly same sized medium creature and like you're not in combat, let's say, so that it's just role play to have you try to use make a performance check to mimic whatever moves they're doing so that you can still stay hidden. And the other part of it is you can end this as a bonus action, but nothing here says you can't attack anybody while you're in this. So I just think if you could get this down to a science and maybe even throw in some sort of like uh, detect thoughts or something so you can see what they're going to do, you could in theory walk like inside someone into a location and then at any point within that 10 minutes, just like pop out of them and then be like, well, sneak attack. Didn't expect the attack to come from inside you. Uh, because again, you're like a ghost. You can walk through stuff. So you still have all your possessions too. So I could walk inside you and then like, you're just having a conversation. And then all of a sudden a spectral arm separates from your arm and then just shanks you in the chest. That would be pretty cool. Now the warlock can do a couple things better because... Their body is safe, they're in their spirit form, which has a couple of resistances and things. But importantly, it can cast conjura uh, Conjuration and Necromancy spells without verbal or somatic components. So I could be inside the person that I'm hiding inside, and I don't need to move my hands or speak to do any of the spells. So they can just be having a conversation, and I can cast spells while hiding completely safe unbeknownst to anyone inside this creature and then put the spell out there into the world, and they're like, who cast that spell? I don't see anybody here. And then they start, you know, thinking, who, was it you? Did you cast the spell? I don't know. Now, again, the spirit projection one here does co require concentration, so you're limited in what spells you can use, and both of them do require you to take a d10 force damage when you end your turn inside the creature. Uh, so... You could potentially, how, depending on how your constitution saving throw is as the warlock, it could, you just have to be mindful that it could knock you out of it if, you know, they roll, it's a d10, it would be a concentration check of a minimum of a 10. So as long as you can beat that consistently, you don't have to worry about getting knocked out from that. Um, and then the other interesting thing is your body teleports you can have your you could have your spirit you could do all this stuff mess with everybody while hiding inside someone and then have your body your spirit form teleport back to your body or almost equally as terrifying have your body teleport to your spirit form and then like realistically you just would appear i assume next to them but that could be also a very weird gruesome situation of you climbing out of somebody um that would i think just be more for the visuals but uh, then you also have the, again, the form of dread ability, which you could activate while inside, which would give you temporary hit points. Uh, when you hit a creature with an attack roll, they have to be make a saving throw or be frightened. You're immune to frighten, and then you'd heal the necrotic damage. So I thought that this was a really interesting concept. Both of them work. The, um, the rogue one has a shorter period of time. It's only 10 minutes, but it's non-concentration and a bonus action to animate it, or to, to activate it, rather. The Undead Warlock one is interesting because it is an action, but you can you can be in a safe space and then do all of this kind of recon skinwalking, if you will, uh, or ghost walking. I don't know. Anyway, hiding inside another creature, uh, projecting yourself from a far distance away because there's no limit on how far you can be. You just need to be concentrating on this ability. And then again, you could bring yourself to that location. You could... Here's a better one, because I mean, the ones I'm talking about are probably harder to do where you're hiding inside someone that you don't know. You could do this with a party member where a party member says like they're come alone and your party member goes in and they just keep their hands like at the and they walk deliberately and slowly and you are coming with them in spirit form inside them. 
and then when stuff's about to go down, you teleport your body to them, pop out, and then, like, you're ready to go. Because a D10 force damage a turn is not a lot, and again, especially if nobody knows that you're there because you're physically hidden from everyone. I mean, you could even cast invisibility on yourself and still do this. That kind of defeats the purpose, I feel like. If you're invisible, you might as well just be invisible. But I don't know. There's probably other spells or abilities that people can think of that allow you to replicate this, but these were two I thought of because some of the abilities that are out there that let you kind of become ethereal like this and walk through walls and creatures, say if you end your turn inside something, it like harmlessly shunts you out to the nearest space. Or in some of them that say for every five feet you're pushed out to get to like a safe space, you take damage per five feet. This is just a D10 damage and you can feasibly end yourself inside a creature. I mean, you're fighting a dragon, whoosh, jump inside the dragon. Now you're floating, flying inside the chest cavity of this dragon and you're still fully functional. I mean, if your DM allows you to do stuff like I'm inside the chest of the dragon, I'm just going to go stab it in the heart a bunch and your DM allows you to do it. Well, I mean, that's an option for you, but at the very least, you'd have full coverage and protection from any outside attacks from the dragon because it can't find you. You're hiding inside it. Like I said, this is something I don't think I've seen anybody really talk about, so I thought it was an interesting, thought-provoking question. How would you handle it in your game? Would you allow it to work basically like I'm suggesting? Now, some of them do say you can move through creatures, but they say you can move through creatures, which the way we know the word can in Dungeons & Dragons means... You're allowed to if you want to, but you don't have to. So I could move through a creature, but that doesn't mean I have to keep going. I could stop. And then how would you handle it if someone brought this up to you? I sh I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people after this video are going to be like, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to talk to my DM and see if I can figure it out. And I, I want to know, I want to hear the stories about how this works. But yeah, I like the concept of you having to make like a performance check or an insight check to try to mimic the movements so that you don't like, they're not just like talking and they're like, and you, and then your spirit hand is like right here and you're like, oh, oh, oh nobody's don't saw, no one saw anything. Uh, but then again, depending on what you're attempting to do, that might actually be even more beneficial to you because if you're trying to like sabotage or ruin someone's like relationship or, or pit people against each other and they go to point and you keep your spiritual hand here and they're like what is that and they're like i don't know this is me how could you not know it's coming out of your body and then you just disappear back to your body and that's the end of that so anyway let me know what you all think in the comments down below thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next time